Hello, Sid Roth. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. There is the atmosphere of heaven on this set, and if the atmosphere of heaven is on this set, it's going to invade wherever you are right now. My guest, David Jones, taught for six months on something that was so significant that the most unusual miracles started erupting. Feathers, all different colors, angel feathers started materializing in very amazing, amazing ways. Precious gemstones started, stones from heaven started materializing. We'll find out what jewelers had to say about it. Diamonds started materializing, cut better than the finest jeweler ever. We're going to find out what he taught, because I believe what he taught is mandatory for miracles to take place. And I believe that this is a moment in history in which everyone that knows God will walk in the miraculous. David, you were sabotaged from the beginning. Oh, yes. Your father, I mean, it's hard for me to comprehend this, but your father used to fight with you. Explain. Oh, yes. He was a boxer. He was a fighter, naturally, and uh, he wanted me to be a tough guy. So he would always challenge me, punch me in my chest, knock me down, get up, get your best hope, try me. Come on, show me what you got. And uh, I resented it. For number one, I loved my father, and I just resented trying to retaliate against him. So uh, when I got in fights in the nightclubs and the dance halls, I didn't hold back nothing. I said, no one's going to hurt me anymore, and no one's going to tell me what to do. And uh, you uh, left home at an early age. 13 but, years of age. But what you just said, a lot of people are saying, no one's going to tell me what to do. <laughs> One of you listening to me right now, that's what you just recently said. No one's going to tell me uh, what to do. And yes. you, you uh, went into the Marines. Went into the United States Marine Corps. What did course. they equip you for? Killing machine. Killing really? machine. Yeah. They say you have a strong backbone and you can think when you're at battle and you're at war. So I became a... 0311 rifleman first to hit, hit the beaches and uh, uh, they used me as a killing machine. That's what it was for. And, and then when you got out of the Marines, what was your life like? Oh, it was even worse, you know. Uh, I still resented authority. Um, <clears throat> I didn't want to wanna have nothing to do with people trying to control me or tell me anything. I was walking in pride and didn't even know it. And one thing I found about walking in pride is that you're so blind that you don't, you're ignorant to the fact of it that you're walking in a, 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 a prideful attitude which is so detrimental to you and everyone around you. And you know, amazing, in that situation, God gave you a revelation of the end of time. What did you see? Oh man, it was incredible. It was just like me sitting here watching you. Uh, I was 17 years of age and I was, remember I was at home at night and I had the radio and I was turning the channels and I heard a woman scream and it wasn't like it was in behind the house of a in front of the house, it was like in the air. So I went to go towards that window and I said, wait a minute, if I go towards that window, I'm gonna see something that I don't wanna see. But see it, I was compelled to go, so I went. And I, it was a second story and I looked down and I, and I thought I was gonna see a woman maybe stabbed or something and I didn't see nothing. But when I came up and my eyes hit the heavens and the stars, it's just like a motion picture, the moon just shoo, And it's like uh, someone took a, a, a knife and just poked into the moon and the blood began to ooze out of the moon. And then the stars in the heaven just said, whoop, and the sky itself said, whoop, and see it, all this was happening simultaneously. Uh, the moon turned to blood. The stars fall from the heavens. The sky roll up as a scroll. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And then all of a sudden I seen a lady with long black hair looking at all these events taking place on the earth. And she took her fingernails and began to dig in her face and scratch and begin to run. And then I seen 10 people running, 100 people running, thousands of people running and screaming what was taking place on the earth. It's like, all time stood still for God. This is his hour, this is his time. And the look of, on their faces when they were running was, <sighs> they were running, falling on top of each other. All of a sudden, everything went blank. Everything was clear and I fell to the ground and I was trembling and shaking like, I didn't see that, no, I didn't see that. 
Then I said, yes, I did. So I let me, I said, let me get the Bible. So I started walking through the house and I was saying, God, please don't let me see nothing else. Please, Lord, I don't want to see nothing else. And I got the Bible and I didn't even know this was in the word of God. And I just opened up the Bible and it went to Revelation where it said the moon shall turn the blood and the stars shall fall from the heavens and the sky shall roll up as a scroll. You didn't know that was there before. I didn't know that was. And, and when I opened it up, I opened it up right to it because huh. God had to take me there, Sid, because I, I, at first I thought I was losing my mind. I didn't know this was an open vision. I didn't know anything about visions. And, and then uh, someone invited you to their church. I mean, you were running from oh, things yes. like that. Yes. Why did you go? <laughs> Why, David? Because the guy was funny. <laughs> <laughs> he was a Christian. He was funny. He had big, big eyes and he'd be talking to me about God. He said, wait a minute, are you looking at my eyes? I said, no. He said, yes, you're making fun of my eyes. I said, no, 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 no. And we just started laughing. He said, come on, be my guest at church. He got me with laughter. And so I said, okay. I said, but well, wait a minute, I don't have any clothes. He said, God is not looking at your clothes. He's looking at your heart. And so uh, we went to church and I sat in the back and uh, the evangelist made the altar call and I was sitting back there in the valley of decision. I said, man, I don't know if I can live safe. I don't know if I can do it. And so I didn't get up the first night. That was on a Thursday night. And so I went back to work. Oh, be before I left church, the pastor is at the back door saying, you're going to come and be back with us tomorrow night, son? This is the house of God where everybody's somebody. I said, yes, sir. So I went to work the next day at Ford Motor Company. My boss come brings me that big old check. And I said, oh, yes, me and my brother going to party hardy tonight. Then I said, wait a minute. I told that man of God I was coming to his church on a Friday. What did I do that for? I put the check in and I. That's and, party night. Oh, that's party <laughs> night for me. And I said, wait a minute. Why did I tell him that? Sid, when I made up in my mind to do what I want to do, like I always done, I said, no. I'm not going to that house of God. I'm not going to church. I'm going to party. I fell on the conveyor belt. And when I fell on the conveyor belt, parts was hitting me in the head. Everybody was like, hey, somebody help him, get him. See it, I wanted to lift myself up, but I had no strength. All of a sudden, God started allowing me to hear my heartbeat. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Then I started fading out more. I said, oh no. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Then I began to pray, please give me another chance, Lord. Boop. I'll go to this man of God church. Please give me another chance. Boom, boom. Have mercy, Lord. Boom, boom. And everybody was around me saying, are oh, you all right? I didn't pay any attention. I said, don't do me like this. I'll go to this man of God church. I said, I made it there. Well, before I went, my friends came over my house ready to party. I said, hold it. I'm not going with you guys. I said, I almost died today. My heart almost stopped beating. I said, I'm going to the house of God. They say, man, this guy don't going crazy. I said, I don't care what, what you guys said. I'm going to the house of God. I went, sat in the back. They made the altar call. I started walking down the hall and I heard the devil say, get out of this church, run, run. And I said, no, I was brought up in church as a little boy. I said, no, I must save myself. And I went to the preacher and he said, son, do you want to be saved? I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I want to be saved. It's like big yokes just lifted off me. And when I went to grab his hand, the power of God hit me and I went straight back and there weren't no ushers there to catch me. But when I hit the floor, it was like falling into a bed of cotton and there was a bunch of sisters right there and they jumped back. They were looking at me and back then I thought I was a cool daddy. See it? So I said, wait a minute, what am I doing on this floor? All these pretty girls looking at me. Then the supernatural began and it began in my belly. Then it got in my chest. Then it got in my throat. Then my tongue began to cleave to the roof of my mouth. And see it? I was on alcohol, drugs, cocaine, a mess, TAC all those drugs, but I never experienced such joy, such peace. I never experienced After before. that event, yes. were you still addicted to those drugs? Never again. And listen, he started doing the most extraordinary things in d dealing with physical strength. Don't go away, we'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. <laughs> we now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with David Jones. And David had an encounter with the power of God. He got off of alcohol, he got off of drugs, but some amazing things happened to you. Uh, you used to go out into the woods and pray, but one day something strange happened. Explain. Supernatural. Uh, it was a time of my life for 10 years, God had me in a season of fasting and praying, but more prayer than fasting. And this night I thought it was going to be uh, my normal, I'll go out and worship the Lord and just love on the Lord and the Lord began to speak to me. And, but no, when I walked out and I was getting ready to worship him, I heard the Lord speaking to my hearing, run. 
And then I was like, run, this is unusual. And, and I didn't obey the phrase. And then I heard him say, run. And so I began to run and I began to run. All of a sudden, the neighbor's dog ran alongside of me that was out there with me, and I began to run. All of a sudden, the supernatural power of God becoming, became a, becoming upon me. All of a sudden, I began to run so fast that I left the dog, and I, I, I can't tell you, how, was it a you quarter mean you mile? Out, you outran the I dog. I outran the dog and left the dog. My legs were going so fast, it shocked me. I was running like Superman or Flash or somebody. It was just supernatural. But when I came to a dead stop, I wasn't breathing hard and I just fell to my knees and I said, oh my God, what's happening? Then I heard the Lord said, I want you to stay in the race, son. I'm gonna use your body in supernatural feats and in signs and wonders. God taught you how to walk in something, a word that most people don't even understand, don't even comprehend, but it's so important to God. If you want to be elevated to the next level with God, if you want to be used in this mighty outpouring of God's Spirit, you must understand what David Jones spoke about for six months. The subject is humility. How did God start to teach you about this with a co-worker? Well, um we got hired and at that time I was doing red iron steel work where we had big wrenches and, and tightening up bolts and red iron beams. And so we was up about three stories and his name was uh, Gar and he asked me what was my name and I told him. And so as a couple of days went by, he said, man, get your so-and-so over here and help me. And, and I was like shocked and I, I walked over to him. I said, you know, I was always taught to respect the man. I respect you. I don't want to hear what, what you got to say. Let's get to work. And then I was trying to pray, Sid, and then i just gotten saved, and I said, Lord, you know, I don't want to pray anymore. I'm just going to hit this man with this wrench. I say, uh, 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 if he'd say anything to me, then the boss came up and broke us up, and then lunchtime came, and so I took my little New Testament out, and I began you, to... You were really going to hit him in the face with a wrench? Oh, with all my might, and with okay. all my strength, as hard as I could. And uh, That's not very humble. Oh, that's not humble at all. <laughs> okay, and, uh, go ahead. But it's sure, sure enough true. And so uh, I got my New Testament out, and, I and the Lord took me to a verse that my grandma taught me. The first Bible verse was Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men, holiness without, which no man shall see the Lord. And I begin to cry, I said, and I begin to pray. I say, God, I don't want to hurt people anymore. I was taught to kill in the Marines. I don't want to hurt anyone anymore. I say, please help me. Now, Sid, I, first I wanted to hit him with the, 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 the uh, uh, wrenches, but now I'm praying for him. Okay, all of a sudden the boss didn't allow us to uh, work together. He separated me. I'm down, sorting our boats. Here he come right to me. All of a sudden the power of God picks me up and I looks him in the face and I say, Gar, it's better for a millstone to be tied about your neck and cast into the depths of the sea than to mess with one of God's little ones. I say, that's all I'm gonna say. He said, you don't said enough. And then he walked off, storming off. And I was like, oh God, have mercy. The next day when he came to work, all side of his face was swollen up. His eye was closed in and he came straight to me. He said, look at my face, man. Look what happened. He, I said, what happened to you? He said, I don't know. I just woke up this morning and my face was like this. And he said, and it constantly hurts. And he walked away and I said, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. I didn't say, mm-hmm, that's what you get, messing with a Christian. No, 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 no. I didn't rejoice. I said, Lord, have mercy. Touch him, Lord, heal him. And the Lord heal him. From that day forward, Sid, that man treated me like I was somebody. And God showed me. He said, son, if you always hold your peace, I will fight for you. The reason why a lot of Christians don't see my mighty hand move in their life, they don't hold their peace. It's conditional. If you hold your peace, I will fight for you. And you told me something the other day mm -hmm. about touch not God's anointed. Ooh. And But you gave me a revelation that I, I, I just never even thought about. Yes. It wasn't the person. No. It was the presence of God. Explain. Um, <clears throat> uh, I had a pastor that I had to go through this experience. God allowed this to happen, that I was working with him on one of his... Well, right you know, I don't even want to hear that experience, but what, explain about touching God's But the anointing, anointing is, is, okay, God say, touch not my anointing, nor do my prophets any harm. It's not so much that man or woman is so special, it's the anointing that's been smeared on their life. That's what's special. And it, when it's you, like going against God. It's going against God himself. That's why it's so dangerous. Hey, I'll tell you what, it was so hard for David to learn these lessons because remember the, the mantra he had, so to speak, no one tells me what to do, no one. And God 
taught him step by step. And he yes. taught for six months. I have the book, Humble is the Way, yes. of his teaching on humility. I have never seen such revelation of humility before. But guess what happened after he started teaching? The supernatural erupted. Precious stones, you're going to see a diamond that came from heaven. Don't go away. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. <laughs> We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with David Jones, and I'm having so much fun. Do you know why I'm having so much fun? The presence of God has so invaded yes. our studio. Yes. So, so listen, David is teaching, and I have never seen such teaching on humility, and I know that for you to yes. get to the next level with God, you must understand this teaching. For you to be used in the greatest outpouring of God's Spirit, and someone's neck was just healed in Jesus' name, test it, you'll see it's good. For someone to be used in the greatest outpouring of God's Spirit in history, which has already happened on planet Earth, you must read and practice what Dave, uh, I've never seen revelation like this before. You really need to read this book, but David, you had a, a woman speak in your congregation, Prophetess. and what happened? Uh, she came to do a revival, and, and uh, when she first night she got up, she said, Pastor Dave, let me say this to you. If, if I ever heard from God, I heard from God about you in this church. There's getting ready to be a move of God here, and she said, remember these words, it's going to be undeniable. No one's going to be denied. No one can be able to say, this is not a move of God. She said, remember, Pastor David, it's going to be undeniable. So what happened? All of a sudden, she was up ministering, and then angel feathers start falling. And I'm sitting on the front row, and I'm saying, am I believing what I am believe I'm seeing, Lord? <laughs> feathers just start flowing. And when they started, she said, I'm turning it over to your pastor. And I said, whoa. And I heard the <laughs> Lord say, tell the people to stand upon their feet and worship me. I'm not done. We begin to worship God and feathers falling and, and the saints were saying, oh, pastor, look at the feathers falling on your coat. Lord said, just worship him now, honor him now. Let's worship him. We begin to worship him. Then a young lady come down the aisle shaking and when she opened up her hand, it was a garnet gem appeared in her hand, which is her birthstone. Uh, do you have that there? Yes, I have it right here. Show me have it right here. It this one right there in the center. Now, just out of curiosity, because I, I, I see these angel feathers. How come there's so many different colors? You know, I mean, there's, there's blue and yellow and purple uh, and brown. And you know what the Lord revealed to me? There's different nations of people. There's black, there's white, Hispanic, uh, uh, Filipino, Italian, Vietnamese. There are different races of people. Why not different colors of angel feathers? And uh, are miracles taking place? Miracles when these are things? taking place. People are being healed, set free. We don't see blind eyes open, the deaf hear, AIDS heal, cancer healed, all men of diseases heal. We having people come as far as Germany just to come to see these great manifestations. Movie producers, producers coming, having manifestations in the meeting at ABC. Feathers are just falling in their midst. I mean, it's undeniable. Power of God. What is that over there? This is one of the gems that appeared in the Bible when we was reading Psalms 145 and 3. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His power is unsearchable. Just hold that in your hand from heaven itself. Garnet gem. Look at the cut oh on goodness. it and the cross that's cut inside of it. A cro He's yeah. right. There is a cross and in cut inside of this gem. Now, have you had any reports of jewelers? It's kind of neat holding something from <laughs> heaven, you know? Yes. Have you had any reports from jewelers? Oh, yes, it, yes. It's, um, here, I want you to see some of these feathers. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this. They're orange, they're purple, they're pink, they're white, they're yellow, they're gold, they're a facet of colors. And feathers represent the favor of God. In Psalms 91 and 4, the Lord say, I will cover thee with my feathers, and under my wings shalt thou trust. And the Lord say, these are tokens of my love to you. Tell me briefly about your daughter. My daughter Shaylin, uh, it was prophesied that she would be a prophetess to the nation, and God is using her supernaturally. Uh, we had a young man that was uh, working and she talked to him on the phone and she said, what you doing? She's only two years old. He said, I'm cutting grass. She said, why? He said, so I can make money. And she said, so you can give money in the kingdom? And he said, what is that? Pay your tithes. He said, oh, 
Okay, Shaylin, I'll pay my ties. And we came to find out the young man wasn't paying his ties. She's two years old? Just two years old. One morning we woke up and I said, Shaylin, talk. She said, you talk, Daddy. I said, we're going to heaven and Jesus is going to be there and, and the God himself going to be the light. I said, now you talk. She said, Daddy, the angels are big. She said, Daddy, the angels are going to open up the doors to the kingdom. I said, oh my God. I said, say that again. She said, Daddy, the angels are big. The angels are going to open up the doors to the kingdoms. There's a prophetic anointing upon two-year-old Shaylin Jones, Faith Jones. You, you know, children are going to be moving like yes. people that have been in ministry 50 years. Yes, yes, yes. We've seen the children now laying hands on the parents. One of our children went to school, the teacher was sick, and she went and laid hands on it. Instantly she was healed. You, you told me one of these angel feathers actually changed colors. As oh, yes, tell yes. Me this one right here. Which if you, one? If you can put the camera on this one right here. Uh, uh, one of our members told one of her friends about it, and when she got to her house, there was a feather laying right on her door, and she said, oh, no, that couldn't be. She picked it up and went in the house and showed it to her friend. She said, this feather is on the doorstep. This feather was pure white. Right before their very eyes, it did a metamorphosis change, and it went from white to this grayish, brownish, a uh, gray color right before their very eyes. Do you know what I believe? These signs and wonders are occurring because we are in the last of the last days. Do you remember the vision that David had even before he was a believer in the Messiah of, of the end of time yes. and the fear? <laughs> That's, that, what did you see people, how fearful were people? Their faces were so terrified. They were just, just running, they were running, but they knew and God allowed me to sense what they were feeling. This is it. God is moving and can no one stop it. All time was standing still for God. He was having his moment now. And the reason that I am holding this stone with a cross that materialized from heaven, I'm holding a stone yes, from, heaven. from heaven. It's a sign and a wonder. The reason these angel feathers are descending, and they're descending on people, not just in your congregation, right. they're descending on people everywhere. Everywhere in different churches and schools. Our children, when they go to school, one, one, like one of our children, when he sat down in his desk, feathers just appeared all around his desk. Angel feathers falling on the teachers and they going like this. They falling in their face and they just fanning them away because they don't have no idea what's going on. But our children do. Do you know the scriptures say those that are buried in the dust, some shall rise to everlasting life and some to everlasting condemnation. You can rise to everlasting life. If you don't know God before you die, I promise you, you will not know him after you die. You can know him right now. That's why you're watching. God has such a love for you. He wants you to experience true shalom, true peace. There's no other name given unto men in which we must be saved to have intimacy with God but the name of Jesus. If you would pray that God would forgive you of your sins, repent, that means ask them, tell them you're sorry, and believe the blood of Jesus has washed away your sins and ask Jesus to live inside of you and be Lord of your life. You'll have something more precious than this gem that I'm holding right now. Make Jesus your Lord. He's everything. He's all, all, all.